Okay guys, so in this video, we're gonna be doing a full review of Read AI. I'm gonna give you my thoughts, the strengths, the weaknesses. I'm gonna tell you sort of like the things that I like about it, the things that I don't like about it. And I'm also gonna give you some tips on how I've been able to use it more effectively as a tool altogether. First of all, I wanna say that I did a video about this about a year and a half ago. And basically that video has gotten over 30,000 views, you can see here. And in fact, it's actually responsible for, it's my most best performing video on this channel. So if you haven't seen that one, go watch that video. It does give you sort of a comparison between uh, multiple tools and my thought process on that is still valid. However, this is sort of a, let's call it an upgrade to that particular to, um, video. So I've now been using Read AI for about a year and a half. And in that time process, I've, I've tried a whole bunch of stuff, some things with success and some things not. And I feel like I'm a bit of an expert on the tool at this particular point. I wouldn't say an expert, but maybe a pro user definitely at this particular point. So I have some strong opinions about the tool in general. So I'm gonna to try to be as raw and as candid as you possibly can from this perspective. So if that's something you're interested in, stick around. I try to do productivity videos and talk about sort of like tools that I'm struggling with to improve my own day to day. And I just share these opinions. This is not a paid video. I have to say this because I've been accused on my previous video that I'm clearly being sponsored or paid by Read AI and I am not. Okay, this channel got about 500 subscribers we're way too small for any of that kind of stuff now in the future obviously that's going to change if you're watching this in maybe 2026 or something but for now we're just a baby channel and i'm just i have real world use cases for some of these tools i'm struggling with some of these challenges and i'm just sharing my opinion about the tool i have no affiliation i don't even have any affiliation links now that being said though since i've done these videos i have been getting more requests for people to, to review other tools. And I'll give you a real world example because I want to be transparent with that stuff. So for example, on my LinkedIn, I actually have this person that reached out to me that has a tool called Fellow and they're asking me to review it. Now I said, I've never heard about the tool. Interesting, I'll take a look and get back to you. She sent me a link to sign up. So at some point I'm going to do a review on this tool, but at this particular point, I'm not getting paid for any of this. This is just me trying to find the best tool possible for the job. Now I may in the future add some affiliate links at the bottom, right? And if I do, it'll clearly mark affiliate links down here. So at least you guys know that, you, you know, if you want to help out the channel, feel free to do that. But there's no monetary motivation in this video whatsoever. I just want to be clear with that. It's just me sharing sort of the struggles that I've had with this read AI tool. So with that, let's just get right into the video and just talk about the actual tool itself. So let's just start with the basics. What is Read AI? If you don't know what Read AI tool is, it's a tool that basically helps you to manage your meetings and keep track of conversations that happen in meetings and give you a summary of it. So let's pretend for a second that you had a bunch of meetings that you're doing on a daily basis. One of the biggest challenges that you'd have, let's say you're doing this with a notebook, is you know for every single meeting you'd be writing notes, etc. And then at some point you may I might have to send those notes to your colleagues, to your friends, and that creates a problem because if you're doing back-to-back -back meetings, it's really hard to keep up with the notes and keep up with the challenges of just coming up with action items for each of those meetings. And so read AI, what it will do is no no different than how you would send a link to a friend to join a meeting or a colleague, Read AI would join that meeting as a user and it just silently in the background just records the meeting and then it transcribes the meeting and then it uses AI to give you a summary and then it tries to come up with action items so that you could then review it and figure out whether, you know, what action items has to be added or removed from that list and then you could send it out to your colleagues in a much faster way all being automated in the background. So that's basically what Read AI is, just to give you some foundational understanding. And um, the things that I like about it, let's just talk about that quickly. So the things that I like about the tool altogether is I think it has one of the better interface. I've used a few of these other tools. I think it has one of the better interfaces in order to be able to like quickly find your 
meetings. I'll talk about some of the downside of this in a, in a bit, a little bit further on in this video. But overall, it's actually a pretty good interface. I feel like it's clean and it, it gets the job done. Um, this is an example of a meeting that I normally have every Sunday with my dad and a couple of my friends online and um, some of my some of my cousins and stuff. And one of the things that I like right off the top, I come in here, I could get a summary of the meeting itself. So I could get a full on description. Then I could see sort of chapters. So it tries to analyze the conversation and, and sort of group them into topics or chapters, right? And then from there, it tries to also figure out the action items because obviously it knows who's on the call and tries to come up with action items accordingly. And then at the end, it gives you some of the key questions that were asked during the meeting. So all in all, it's sort of a really good summary. The other thing I like about it is the fact that on the video, you have this sort of like trailer, what I would call a trailer, less than a one minute, right? Then you have a highlight, which is a three minute. So it tries to find the best, most key parts of the meeting. You could just watch a three minute section. So if you're kind of skipping through just to find something, if, if this meeting was relevant to what you're looking for, you could just sort of run through the trailer and and do that. And then last but not least, you could watch a full recording of the video itself. So from that perspective, I think it's really good. It has obviously the transcript, so you could see the full transcript word for word on the meeting, which is great. You could do a deep dive. And honestly, I do not use any of this stuff. So it gives you like who's participating in the meeting, gives you an indication of how much they've talked. So I clearly talk a lot. So I have the highest talking volume. And also it gives you sort of like a participant score and your engagement score and charisma score. Honestly, none of this means any single thing. It's just a bunch of fluff. Um, it has no real value, at least in my opinion. However, if you are on a corporate call and you want to see how much engagement somebody has, maybe this might be of value to you. But from my perspective, being sort of a consultant and sort of a business owner has no real value to me. And it has some other stats in terms of like showing you, you know, sort of like the sentiments or engagement score and that kind of deal. Um, and then here's the highlights of those conversation, right? So all in all, I think the interface is great. It does a fantastic job. It just kind of helping you to quickly jump to the section of the meeting that you care about. The other thing that I think is good about it is that it has some integration. So obviously it integrates with your calendar. So it looks on your calendar to see what was done. Oh, sorry, what meetings you have. And if it could join the link, it joins the link. Um, let's say that the meeting is a, a Zoom meeting. Normally you have that URL in the location of the of the meeting, you know, in, on Google uh, Calendar. And so with that, it's able to join the meeting on your behalf. So let me give you a real example of that. Now, it also does a really good job in terms of like, for example, it has an app for Microsoft, for Zoom and for Teams. So if I go here and I click on new meeting, for example, uh, you give it a second and it'll recognize that I just joined the meeting and then eventually it'll actually join on in a sec, give it a second, there you go, right? So that Dwayne's assistant, is, which is the name that I give the Read AI person so that everybody knows who this person is in the background. Um, it's just clear, that's just a tip for you because Normally it says read AI, but not many people know what read AI is. So by naming it your assistant, everybody understands that they're there to take notes. So they don't necessarily have to participate in the meeting, even though it's an AI. And that's the reason why I labeled it like that. So it does show you this, what I think is a very ugly slide that kind of shows you how much time the meeting has passed and kind of tries to give you some information, puts ugly read AI whatever. I don't like this at all, but this neither here nor there. It's just something that sits on the background, right? So as I jump from slide to slide, you'll kind of see it like that. So with that, the other thing that I think is good about the tool is the fact that, like I said, on the integration, so let me just kill this. Uh, so on the integration side, it does have a few integration with, you know, Teams, and OneNote, so you could send the notes to OneNote or Google Docs or 
push to teams, etc. The problem that I find with these integrations, just to kind of highlight on this, while it's good that it has these integrations, honestly, I would rather prefer that it just give me some generic integration. So maybe integration with Zapier, which they have, and make.com would probably be a better approach in my opinion. And the reason why is because I find these integrations to be kind of haphazardly implemented. And I'll give you an example of this. So for example, the Microsoft right now, I have a Google calendar and for my consulting company that I have, I have, I'm working, I have a Microsoft calendar also. And what I find is that it joins the uh, Google calendar perfectly fine. But when it comes to the Microsoft calendar, it doesn't join it as well. So my solution to that is I've been copying the link for or the meeting from my Google, uh, sorry, my Outlook calendar and then transferring that to my Google calendar and putting the link in there. And it seems to join it much, much better, which is a weird type of problem. But for some reason, it tries and tries and tries to join on the T Microsoft Teams meeting, but it doesn't do that with with the Google calendar. It's kind of a weird thing, but just, just kind of a point out there. So if you're using Outlook, if you don't have multiple calendars, it works perfectly fine because I have actually colleagues that have just Outlook and it actually works perfectly fine for them. I think it's just because I have two different calendars is maybe getting confused or something like that. So that's that. Um, what else do we have? So overall, I would say, like I said, the strength is the fact that the tool does a fantastic job with summary, it does a really good job. It's, it's generic, etc. Here are the things that I definitely think are weakness for this tool altogether. So Number one is the search is, I think, weak. So let me just give you an example, technical. Okay, so I'm just gonna do a search for technical. Now I have a meeting that I do every Sunday, as I mentioned before, with my dad and a few of my family members called technical, where we just talk about just random technical stuff and also do sort of um, general talks about business. So that's this meeting here called technical meeting. What I find is, when I do the search, it's really just trying to find every single word that's technical. And I have no way of just filtering to say, hey, I only want to find the meeting title with technical. So so I find that I'm, when I have to go looking for something like a month or two months back, it, it, it's sort of like a kind of a needle in a haystack type of problem. And then worse is that it's kind of bound by this by this um, date time here, which I find really annoying. So you see here it's certain by relevance versus date new SEO list and a deal. So October, right? So it's sort of bound within that time frame. So you have to actually increase the time to then do a search to get things. So if you if that um, if you understand what I mean. So the problem is is that I not only have to know the keyword, I also have to have an understanding of the roughly the range, which I don't think is too bad, but it, you know, cause I might say, oh, I had that last month or I had this meeting two months ago. But again, it would be nice if I could just search for the title of the meeting, or I explicitly say I'm looking for a specific keyword in the con, right? It's a little bit more granularity from that perspective, kind of like an advanced Google search, if you will. So that's that's one that I definitely don't like about it. The other thing that I don't like is it does have the ability for you to, it, once the meeting is finished, for it to send out the meeting notes. And I'm gonna try to see if I can pull this up in real time. I don't know if I have any, but it does give you the ability to set, send the meeting notes to the colleague, to your colleagues. The problem that I have, Let's see if I could find one. The problem that I have is that the format is just horrible and they spend way too much time sort of giving you more of like an advertising rather than just giving you the summary. I don't know if I could find any sort of example, but the, yeah, it's just, it's just, it's annoying in that regards in the sense that what end up happening is let me see if I could, I'll just use this as an example. This is not exactly what it is, but say for example, this here, right? It spends it spends a lot of time kind of focus on advertising and and like when you click into this stuff, if you don't have Read AI, instead of just sending you to the notes, it tries to get you to sign up, right? It's just, it's a lot of fluff and it's like, I'm, I'm paying for a, you know, a premium product. In fact, I'm actually on the um, enterprise plan which is another thing that I think is a negative. 
So I was on the pro plan. However, I wasn't able to do meet and playback, which is, you know, at pro level, you can't get meet and playback. I think it's absurd. So you have to be on the enterprise plan in order to get the meet and playback that I mentioned, which is to be able to click here, see the see the um, trailer or play highlights, which is three minutes or play the full meeting. You have to be an enterprise plan. I find that to be a negative on the tool altogether because I feel like that should just be a pro option, right? The, honestly, I don't see any single thing here as enterprise. It just, yeah. So that's just my personal opinion about it. Um, other negatives that I think are relevant Honestly, they're, they're trying to have this tool be more than what it should be. So for example, the, like they just launched a new feature. I don't know if I could find it because it, it was a pop-up, but they're trying to launch a new feature to integrate with Gmail. And the problem with that is that it, it's basically what they're doing is they're giving you an extension so you could summarize your Gmail messages and the truth is i i don't even know what the value is of this tool so let me give you an example so here right it adds this button here and if i try to reply with a draft it does nothing and this does you would say okay well maybe it's because this email is just a thing i've looked at try to use this with other um other emails and it just doesn't work so i'm not certain what the point is of this and frankly i don't need it to summarize my my gmail right I actually don't. Maybe if I could, if I, you know, it sounds like a nice feature, but the truth is I'd rather them spend more time giving me functionality where I could find meetings or filter meetings based on the type of meetings that I do. And for example, if I'm doing, like I do this this meeting here, come contact consulting every single Wednesday. And I have no way in this tool to be able to say, okay, show me all of the contact meetings. I have no way. I have to do a search for it. And when I do a search for it, it shows all kinds of stuff. So C U M T E C H, right? So that that I just wish that they would just spend more time giving me flexibility to be able to easily find meetings by the topics or the title, etc. Yeah, see, it's just yeah, it's it's weird, right? Um, the other thing is is that for example, the see here Zoom meeting, Zoom meeting, Zoom meeting, it's literally listening to the meeting. So when it summarizes the meeting, if I don't have a proper title, it should automatically give it a title. It's not doing that. So like, I have no idea what these meetings are other than I know they're probably single meetings that I was doing some testing with or something, and it just has no title. So I just wish that they would just like kind of summarize the title for you a little bit better. Right now it doesn't do that. If you have a title in your calendar, it will definitely do it. But it just in general wouldn't do that. So anyway, those are sort of the cons of the tool altogether. I, I don't think I'm missing any single thing. Hopefully that's been helpful. Like I said, I've been using this for about a year and a half now. It definitely is a really good tool. I'm still gonna continue using it. That being said though, um, I'm gonna be exploring some other tools. So uh, stay tuned for that. And if you're interested in seeing some of my takes on Avoma and some of the other Read AI tools, um, I'll link to some of those videos uh, in this, in this, um, at the end of this video. And if you got some value from this, feel free to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day.